Welcome to Ford Power Force Tech Talk. In this series, we'll focus on tips to help you fix your Ford vehicle right the first time. In this systems video, we'll discuss the EcoBoost GTDI Turbo System and a variety of issues that you may come across when diagnosing these engines. When you need to diagnose a lack of power on any vehicle equipped with an EcoBoost engine, also known as a gasoline turbocharged direct injection or GTDI, start by checking for any related diagnostic trouble codes stored in the powertrain control module or PCM. There are multiple systems that can cause poor turbocharger performance or an underboost condition. A P0299 turbocharger underboost diagnostic trouble code or DTC can set because of a fault with these other systems. Correct any other system faults or DTCs that are present before diagnosing a turbocharger performance related concern. Follow the procedures in the workshop manual or on motorcraftservice.com as needed. If there are no DTCs, verify that there are no misfires. Test the contribution of each cylinder using the power balance feature of the integrated diagnostic system or IDS scan tool. If a cylinder contribution concern is identified, be sure to look at the ignition system, the fuel injection system, and any base engine concerns. Next, check the fuel system, both low pressure and high pressure. Compare the actual fuel pressure to the desired fuel pressure parameter ID on the IDS, or use the reference chart in the PCED. If there is a significant difference, see the PCED for further direction. If there are no misfires and the fuel system is operating properly, take a look at the manifold absolute pressure, or MAP, and turbocharger boost pressure sensors. They are the primary inputs that the PCM uses to control turbocharger operation. Perform a rationality test on these sensors using the IDS to monitor the parameter IDs. The readings should be close to each other during key on engine off operation. If they're not, visually inspect the sensors for debris or contamination, loose connections, harness chafing, and physical damage. Next, check the wastegate and bypass valves. The wastegate regulates turbocharger exhaust flow and the bypass valve regulates intake air flow. Carefully inspect both for physical damage or tampering. Test their function by active commanding both of them open and closed using parameter IDs in the IDS for possible causes of lack of power or noise. Remember, on some turbochargers, these components may not be serviced separately, and they should not be removed from the turbocharger. If a gasoline turbocharger direct injection or GTDI equipped vehicle has a noise concern, the cause might be an intake or exhaust leak. Closely inspect all connections on the intake tubing to make certain they're secure. To help identify a leak in the intake tubing, you can test the system using a smoke machine. Here are the steps. Wrap the air filter in a plastic bag. Reinstall it in the vehicle to prevent the pressure and smoke from escaping. Disconnect the charge air cooler tube at the throttle body and block off the opening. Remove one of the sensors from the intake tubing. Use the open port to pressurize the system with the smoke machine. Don't exceed 10 PSI of pressure during this procedure. Using a flashlight, ultraviolet light, or laser light, search for the source of leaks in the tubing where smoke is visible. Next, use a soapy water spray around all of the tubing and connections and look for air bubbles. When looking for exhaust leaks, pay close attention to carbon tracking between connections at the cylinder head and turbocharger. And be aware, exhaust leaks can also affect the performance of the turbocharger system. If you do find a leak, you'll need to repair or replace any affected components according to the directions in the workshop manual or consult motorcraftservice.com. The V6 gasoline turbocharged direct injection or GTDI engines are equipped with two turbochargers. To help determine which turbocharger may have failed, 
disconnect and block off the wastegate pressure line on one of the turbochargers. Remember, never disable a turbocharger mechanically. Since the wastegates on the V6 GTDI engines are normally closed, the turbocharger that has been disconnected will build full boost all of the time. Use the Integrated Diagnostic System, or IDS, to control the wastegate solenoid and open the opposite turbocharger wastegate while driving the vehicle. You can monitor boost pressure inputs to see if the isolated turbocharger has the ability to build boost. Reconnect the wastegate pressure line and perform the same procedure with the opposite wastegate line disconnected and blocked off. Both turbochargers should be able to build a similar amount of boost while they are isolated. This test is also especially helpful when diagnosing a noisy turbocharger. It's possible for a noisy turbocharger to be in good working condition but is being overworked in order to compensate for an underperforming turbocharger. If isolating the turbochargers causes a change in noise, inspect the opposing turbo. To identify a mechanically failed or damaged turbo, you need to inspect for component seizure. Check for damaged blades or signs of contact between the blades and the turbo housing. Also, excessive engine oil leaking from the turbocharger body is a sign for concern. Keep in mind that some oil in the charge air cooler tubing is considered normal. After verifying a turbo failure, there are several reasons the damage could have occurred. Some possible causes include debris in the oil from excessive engine wear or damage, restrictions in the oil supply or drain lines from sludge, kinks, damage, a clogged inline filter if the vehicle is equipped with one, or other forms of debris or aftermarket modifications. To find out if debris caused the turbo failure, inspect and flush the turbo lubrication lines. You may need to capture the contents from the flushing procedure in a coffee filter or black plastic cap. The black cap provides the visual contrast needed to see the excess metallic particles suspended in the engine oil. Next, flush the turbos with clean oil to see if any particles may still be hidden. If debris falls out from either the turbos or lubrication lines, it indicates damage or contamination. The lines and turbocharger should be replaced. If you find significant amounts of metal in the oil supply line leading to the turbocharger, it suggests that an internal engine failure may have occurred that damaged the turbo. It's important to check for signs of lack of maintenance too such as sludge in the turbocharger, oil supply line, or oil return. Sludge can also accumulate in the internal oil passages of the engine or the engine crankcase. If sludge breaks free, it can reach the turbo lines again, leading to repeat turbocharger failures. Motorcraft's full line of high-quality motor oils is formulated for naturally aspirated, turbocharged and supercharged gas engines, as well as diesel engines. Most motorcraft oils come in convenient one-quart packages or easy-to-use 55-gallon bulk quantities for busy shops. Using bulk oil is environmentally proactive and it can provide a substantial savings. And when you're choosing parts for all of your repairs, remember that motorcraft parts feature a two-year unlimited mileage warranty. That's all for this post. Check out the rest of our series of installation and repair tips for Ford vehicles. Thanks for watching.